Hey folks, so a couple days ago somebody um, asked a uh, for a new feature on Downshift and what came out of that I thought was kind of interesting and taught a couple interesting principles so that's what I want to talk about today. So um, they wanted me to provide an option to customize scroll into view.block so I probably should have brought this up but if you're not familiar with Downshift um, it's a autocomplete component that allows you to build um, experiences like this where you can um, arrow down and, and move things around and whatever. Um, and there's a library that we're using that controls um, the scroll of this menu here as you uh, navigate, navigate around to the different items. And so what they wanted was they wanted the ability to um, customize the way that that is happening. So um, when I go down here, the green, um, it scrolls only as much as it needs to to show the whole element of the green. They wanted to make it so that um, it would scroll all the way to where green was at the top um, for a specific use case that they had. And so uh, the library that we're using has that uh, built-in support um, using block, um, let's see, I think it was block something else. Uh, they wanted to specify block as some other value. And so this is the way that it was built out. Um, here's downshift JS. We're importing a bunch of utilities and one of those is this scroll into view. And scroll into view is defined here. Used to be a lot bigger but somebody recently um, created this, this fine fellow here. Uh, created compute scroll into view um, and made this a lot simpler. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're just calling scroll into view with our uh, node and then the root node. So it'll keep going up to find the scrollable element all the way up to this uh, root node. And uh, yeah, it set that as the boundary. So they wanted to, get, uh, to be able to add an option here that would uh, pipe in through here to set the block as uh, something else. And um, yeah, so let's... Um, as, as I was thinking about this, um, I looked here and I said, okay, so we're using scroll into view um, in one place, we're importing it, and then we're using it in this scroll highlighted item into view. And um, so I thought, okay, interesting. Um, we could provide like a second argument here, this dot props dot override options or something. But um, I decided that I, I didn't really like the idea of having a, like, I want to narrow down the props that I have on my downshift component as much as possible. Um, I don't want to have a bunch of one-off props for uh, for different things. Like what if somebody wanted to customize some other aspect of this function um, in, in any other way? Maybe they want to have it return early if there is no root node or if the root node is something specific or you know there, there are a wealth of things that um, people could want to customize and we'd have to add, keep adding options for that. Um, and the more options that you add, the more documentation you have to have for it, the uh, more tests you have to have for it, so you make sure you don't break things. And so I was thinking, okay, what if we um, invert some control here and let people provide us their own implementation of scroll into view? And so that's what I did. I, I suggested, um, oh, I didn't actually say what I was going to do. Um, let me show you the PR for it. Um, so it was actually pretty simple um, in implementation. I just added a new prop called scroll into view. And right here is, is all the changes for the, the whole library that I needed to do. So um, this is in our prop types definition right here. I added a scroll into view um, prop. It can accept a scroll into view prop that's a function. And then this is our default props here. Um, so the default will be scroll into view. Now this is using um, object shorthand and so that is going to resolve to the scroll into view that we're importing from utils. And so by default the prop will be scroll into view and then inst instead of calling scroll into view directly we're calling it via props. So um, by doing that we don't actually break any of the existing behavior. Um, we just allow people to override this using props. Um, and that is called um, inversion of control. So it's a mechanism by which um, the library calls into user code. So normally a, the a user code will call into the library, like you're gonna render downshift or whatever. 
um, and you are at the mercy of downshift itself with um, APIs downshift will expose to you. But if downshift exposes a, an API that inverts control, then it actually will call into you and you can give back the information that uh, downshift needs from you. Uh, in this case, we don't actually need anything. We're just, it's a side effect um, API, but um, the, the idea is the same. Downshift will call, uh, the library calls the user code rather than the other way around. So we're inverting control there. Um, the render props API is the same thing. It's inversion of control. Um, and then the state reducer, that's um, something else that I wanted to show. So uh, this was uh, a couple of months ago, uh, earlier this year, somebody said, hey, I want a new prop called close on selection. Um, so what this person wanted was uh, an ability to change the um, uh, how state was managed in downshift. And um, it, that's great. I, um, I want to like, so downshift to be, or for any library to be useful, it needs to make some, have some opinions about how state is managed or what um, happens when users interact with things. And so it, it, I did make some choices that were specific to my use cases when I built downshift, but um, I, I was aware that people would have differing use cases. And so that's why I implemented control props so people could uh, manage state themselves. But that's a little bit extra work. And that's what this person was saying. Hey, I'd like to just add another prop so that um, I don't have to do this whole control prop thing. Um, and it, it made sense, like their use case, what they wanted made sense. Um, but the changes I wasn't super excited about, um, like the required changes, this was a specific prop. And I just thought, you know, every single little state change that people want, we're just going to keep adding props to this thing, more documentation, more opportunity for bugs. And so um, I made a suggestion here to say, hey, what if instead um, we, before we call set state or like went in that set state updater function, before we return the state that we're going to set, how about we call um, this modify state change prop, which we later re renamed, um, but uh, just uh, we call from the library code into the user code, the user code can do whatever they want, and then I'll take that and do what I need to with it. Um, and so that's another example of inversion of control. Uh, and that opened up a ton of things for us. So no truth here, uh, implemented that. We um, iterated on the API a uh, fair amount, um, decided on the name state reducer. Um, and uh, yeah, ended up releasing that. And it's it served us super, super well. Uh, so many um, issues have never been opened just because this um, state reducer exists. Uh, so anyway, that's your little lesson on inversion of control. Um, also, I, I should talk about composition, function composition. So um, function composition makes inversion of control palatable. So if we go back here, um, so all this person wanted was a single prop to change what the, pro, uh, what the block value should be. And so it would be really easy. They just say downshift to block value equals and then whatever their value would be. And it, so from the user standpoint, um, having a specific prop for that is actually easier, even though there's like more documentation and stuff, but um, like actually using the component that way is easier. Um, but it does make the code base more complex. So by going with the inversion of control route, now they have to provide an entire implementation of scroll into view rather than just uh, a single prop. And so it, it's a lot more work on the user uh, side of things. Uh, and that's that's kind of the idea of uh, inversion of control. You give them more control. And so like that's the same thing with render props. You have to do a lot more work uh, to get things uh, to work properly. So this is where function composition comes into play. If there is a particular scroll into view that makes a lot of sense, then somebody could publish that or you put that in another directory or something, whatever, uh, in a module. And then you just use, um, use that for your prop or potentially even better um, you create your own version of downshift that just forwards on all the props but also provides a specific prop uh, and that's actually what i'm going to be talking about in my talk simply react that i'm giving this week at uh, react rally um what is going on um and um yeah just the idea of um if you're using the right patterns and, and principles, 
then you can really enhance the experience of building your components and using your components. I'm not sure what's taking so long for Netlify to serve some JavaScript here. But uh, anyway, you'll have to tune in to React Rally later this week um, on Friday to watch my about that. OK, cool. I hope that's helpful to you all. And I will see you all later. Bye.